Hey there, welcome back. Marish here and today is Manor Lords Combat Guide. I'm gonna show you how I do the fighting, but if you're wondering, hey, why are you making this video? Because I didn't want to, but I had an inspiration. So Tacticat, another YouTuber, I'm gonna link his channel and direct link to the video itself, was just pushed on me because YouTube knows what I'm doing. So here's an idea and this is not about combat itself but uh, approaches a bit differently that you build a trap your your uh, castle right and then you basically lure your positioning and everything quite interesting you're basically using archers right because now archers are again buffed and so fighting and everything and everything but there was some parts i didn't like so i'm gonna show you my take on this absolutely different approach they are not even close to compare so for building and everything down in the description is linked to this particular video and uh, what was funny he also had yeah this royal tax uh, problem of course we have this bug so this is that part new let's switch over to how i like to do it so quickly the differences the main differences i'm i have ah uh, yeah this is not the real life so real life in game so first of all i find it absolutely <laughs> any fight all the fight where you have armies more than two or three rider uh, parties coming you know the, the not full ones i want to fight off my land and the reason is quite simple you know that you have this morale and everything uh, see it doesn't show me how this effectiveness is built up but it should be uh, because every fight despite the fact i'm killing or my uh, my my people are dying there will be corpses those corpses must be gathered by this corpse pit corpse pit can only have four people which are already is like four uh, those spots slots taken they could be doing anything else but they are just waiting for corpses to be dropped so i just move over i think it's 15 percent uh, difference but if you have if they are experienced it's enough so any fight every fight i basically lure them outside of my territory because all the corpses then just decay and i don't care i don't get any hit of that so that's my first rule where i was like so yeah for me castle is not working so what are the other ways uh if you noticed maybe didn't he of course he had a high-end city and everything already but he utilized the fact that he has four archers uh, four archers two spearmen full squad doesn't matter what you're wearing but full squad that's one of the things because in my experience having those hundred families that is required to have full squads that is the biggest issue to equip uh your army if you are looking for uh, yes the archers only require bows that's quite easy but you know what these militia units require sword if you don't have iron i'm literally importing in my game and small shield which is also absolutely cheap to make so shields are no problem and one militia costs me well it can be down to eight eight coins per uh iron so you need 16. so 16 coins if at the time when you have 100 families you can't afford to purchase your the iron and make it into your swords you absolutely do something wrong so that that part is not issue and also i loaded the game where i have no helmets no armor nothing this is just bare minimum should be should be yes bare minimum of uh just you know uh, sword and small shield so next part is i'm just going to guide you through all the important parts where i have the fight important for me is my party when they are in the forest they have debuff uh, when they have debuff i'm not happy so i want to fight in playing field i have them currently move in the um 
forest because I know the tactics how always enemy attacks. He always sends first archer that basically abuses and now he's ex extended the range. They can abuse my guys quite a uh, long time. Lengthy, quite far away. That's the words I'm trying to use. So what I'm doing, I'm positioning outside of the battle, but it still counts as battle. So now I'm launching the time. And you see, you should be able to see how they are moving. After the loading game, it's always there to be. So there's one ambush team, doesn't matter. Okay, I don't care, I'm gonna move on. So what I usually do, they send this one archer. Of course, you will not send because the game was loaded. After the loading, the game acts weirdly. So enemy will not act as normally. But normally the archers come in, doesn't matter what I do. I keep the position and move forward while I move forward I know that oh yes 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 they are acting how, how they're supposed to. so Archer is approaching they are not coming it's fine oh they are also coming fine so first off I'm just you know no need for um, extra death or whatever I'm making them to missile alert because you see it's quite a lengthy period they need to get closer and I'm just eh, do that so you will see as soon as they can start fight shooting they will stop and start shooting I keep moving in with all the parties actually these can be switched but I don't want to because they can switch also to some other party and start shooting them I'm just saying you know stay safe while I'm moving, I'm not attacking. I'm moving them in a line. See? Yes, I'm trying. Now I'm drawing the line, so I'm basically outside of the forest. Where these are coming. They're not coming. Alright. Okay, I know they are attacking this party. The rest of the parties can do this. All right, all right, all right. When they are, so about this distance, when they cannot change stance and run away, because usually if you attack right away, in this distance, they will just move backwards and then you have melee combat and archers will still abuse your party and everything. What I do, I move forward, I move forward. They are focused on this party, on those growth. You see, this is the arrow they are shooting at. They still have the stance, not a single um, enemy, not a single um, my party is lost. What I do with these guys, simple as that, push forward, immediately attack, I'm trying to intercept. And in the same time, these guys also can move forward, they will keep moving forward. And I need to pay attention what's happening with this. Actually, this is a quite close distance. I'll just use my advantage. Normally, you want to have stance, stand your ground, because they have charge attack. And after they have charged, then you push forward. But I have overpowered because they are only 18. I have 36, so my guys can do take them easily. Now. I use this time, it's enough time, they have this weird tactic, whatever they're doing, usually those archers get behind them, in this moment you can use, that would be the smartest way to do, you see, now they realize, oh shit, our archers are taking hit, so at this moment, and here also, now they are coming in you know what at this point there are no more archers you can absolutely destroy their archers without even their party engaging now you don't need to have missile alert anymore they also cannot charge to be fair but let's just use this exercise and draw a line
they also should be done. So they all are focusing on one side. What I can do is spread out from all possible angles. Why? So I can get to them from all possible angles. So this is the important part. You basically want the, the claw formation or call, I don't know what's the precise name. So as soon as you start moving your people, your, your, your army, they will react accordingly. So pay attention where they are focusing, right? So it seems like they are going back. Fine. I'm making my claw formation. All right, they are coming in. Stand your ground, extra defense, and I'm closing the claws. Meanwhile, so this is this really strong party. Meanwhile, we make another claw right here. Oh, strong position. No, no, they don't want to. So I'm intercepting. So you see what's happening here. These I have on, on stand your ground. You can actually change the push forward, but I'm just saving more, more men. And instead, because there are two parties, I'm closing in from behind and they have push forward. I need to focus on both areas. A bit hard, but idea. And it's not, yeah, it's it's right, right. They fall in a trap. So these guys can also attack. And these guys can join in. And the same should be happening here. Like, sweet, sweet sandwich. From both sides are my guys in between here are two parties and here are the really 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 strong enemies the red team the red team or how you pronounce it and here are also closing in this team will stop for a lot that's that's yeah that's why i'm standing on the ground they have stand ground but the other ones are pushing in so this is pretty sweet outcome i have lost yes this is way more than i expected because there were two parties attacking my one oh this is already done this was the So this time, yeah, it's sometimes you manage to hit them pretty well. Uh, the archers are going down first, but you know what? Look at all this uh, disastrous corpse field. And the thing is, no, no one will say you this, but current state later, of course, we, you will need to adapt and, and, and have some better strategy. And of course, archers are great. I love them in all the games, but in here it's not worth it because as soon as they are ca catched uh, melee it's, it's done it's done for them so instead these guys they are their family of three and two of them joining the army what it means there is no loss of family and over a few next months you will have them back they will just pop up like nothing happened this is the best part I like about this game, currently in this state. Yes, I lost. I'm not even pretending, you see. I Now I have back my, my army because I have more families and my problem is sword. So while I'm importing uh, iron, I don't have, I don't want any waste. Now it's time for just, you know, Increasing, let's increase to 20. So we'll make 10 swords, and that's it. This is the combat itself. Like, in, in the essence, it's fighting against the charge with your stand ground, but 
most important is having from both sides, from as many sides as possible. It's usually best case scenario is the sandwich. You have one uh, one of your party fighting and then another closing in. And from both sides, they absolutely kill everything in between them. And as far as I can tell, uh, yes, those swordmen I like the best. Uh, it's called Militia Footman, okay, to be precise. Uh, I used to run with spearmen, but they don't have so much attack. Uh, they can fight against the charge, but a lot of enemies don't have charge. These are absolutely without shields, they're dying too easily. And yeah, archers, when they are just far away, when you or they have in that castle. But in this setup and all the fights, also you would pay attention to what's the curvature, so your army is up on the hill. But as far as that's going, the fight is going on on a plain land, not in a forest, where your guys have debuff, I'd say it's fine. And leaving all the corpses, not dealing with them in any shape or form, I prefer this way. And yeah, that's it about the fighting, the combat and everything. Sorry, no cool castle and everything. I prefer my castle just standing like this, my manor. And... Um, yeah, if you have any questions, probably, I don't know, currently, let's let let them develop a little bit more, then it will be more interesting, otherwise, I have, I'm running this 6 militia and killing everything, there is no, absolutely need for anything else, currently. Alright guys, we'll meet in other videos, cheers.